Well, hello there, YouTube. Welcome to my channel, Jason Explains Things. I'm Jason. Hey, I got a question for you. Do you like small engines? How about small engine maintenance? Oh, you are in luck because this video is going to cover all the principles of servicing any small engine piece of equipment, whether that range all the way up from a lawn tractor to a lawn mower, pressure washer to a little tiller like this one. And if you invest some time and watch this entire video, by the end of it, I am confident you can service any small engine that you might have, even if it's a different brand. With that said, please consider giving this video a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and share this video with your friends, which will really help me out, and I'd greatly appreciate it. So, let's jump back in time and get to it. These are all four-stroke gasoline engines of varying different sizes. Three of them are Hondas, uh, the three up front here, um, and then we have a Briggs & Stratton in the, the uh, lawn tractor. Some steps are going to be universal, such as the oil that we're gonna be using, a recommended fuel type and fuel additives. I'll also cover specific steps in detail for each different engine, and that includes the oil change procedure, checking the air filter, checking the fuel filter, checking the spark plugs, and other things that range depending on the type of gear, such as blades or pumps or what have you. One optional step that I like to do before performing maintenance on practically anything is I like to have everything as clean as possible. This makes just doing the job easier and more pleasant. Also, you're less likely to get internal components dirty as you open things up. So that's highly recommended and also completely optional we're gonna be performing an oil change on all this equipment. And actually, in this case, regardless of its size, they all have exactly the same oil requirements, which is 10W30 SAE compliant oil. The oil that we're gonna be using today is Havilland Lifelong Full Synthetic Oil. Now, this is gonna be a little bit of overkill <laughs> because frankly, you could do just conventional oil if you want to, but we're gonna be going above and beyond, which I like to do. So, now this stuff is awesome for a variety of reasons. First off, it has all of the modern protection and additives to prevent sludge and to protect all your engine internals. This packaging is also rad because it uses 70% less plastic than your traditional jug of oil because you have this external uh, cardboard box that you can easily recycle and then you just have a plastic bag on the inside which is really really cool time to get to work on our equipment but also later on we're going to talk about some fuel additives that are also really important but we'll get to that a little later well, let's get started with these two guys. First off, I figured lawnmower is the most common thing that you're looking to you know, do a service on. Um, and by the way, check the description for chapter markers if you wanna jump around between subjects. You know, If you just want the, the riding mower, you can just jump right to it. Um, so these uh, two pieces of equipment actually share virtually the exact same engine. Now this is a lawnmower manufactured by Honda. This is a pressure washer manufactured by Troybilt but they both use GCV engines. Um, so this is a GCV 200 and this is a GCV 190. I've actually taken a GCV 190 completely apart and there's a video all about that if you wanna learn how to rebuild one of these. Um, they're very, very similar. They share a lot of parts, but not everything is the same. Let's start by removing the old oil on both of these. Most vertical shaft engines like these two use the same port to fill and drain oil. Ooh, that looks dirty. Some actually have drain plugs, like this Toro mower, for instance. One thing that I forgot to mention on these engines that require you to tip them on their side is you wanna make sure your gas cap is nice and tight. While the oil drains out of the lawnmower, I can show you another option if you wanna be fancy pants about your oil changes, is you can use an oil extractor like this one. This is kind of a, a nice, easy way to do it too. Yeah, about 45 seconds later, all your oil is sucked out. With the mower on its side, now is an awesome time to check the blades. Yeah, so as you can see, these blades are in really good shape. I see a couple nicks, like one right there. And if you wanna see a really good video about how to sharpen lawnmower blades, I'll link to one below that I did a couple years ago. All right, time for some new oil. So both those engines have an oil capacity of 0.41 liters or about roughly 14 ounces. And we'll pour almost all 14 ounces in there, but we'll leave a little bit out. Put our dipstick in, and you don't want to screw it in, you just want to go like that. And I think we are good. Perfect. 
Awesome, so the oil change is now done on both these two Honda GCV engines, so we can now move on to the air filter, which you can see right here and right here. Simply remove this cover with the two clips right there, and there is our filter, which is, I would say, in not wonderful shape, but not terrible shape. Um, you can definitely replace this, and I will have the part number uh, for this, and it's the exact same uh, part number for the other engine, the, the 190 as well. But this isn't too bad, so I'm just gonna blow this off with my air compressor. So your carburetor intake is right here, and you can kind of see that that's why this area is dirtier. So to uh, make it brand new, I'm just gonna flip it over. <laughs> So one more filter we're gonna check here on the GCV engines, and this pertains to both of them, is the inline fuel filter. You just open up your gas cap, and I can actually see it with my eyes right now, but I can just take a look really closely here with my flashlight, and it's nice and clean and intact. So the last thing we're gonna do is check the spark plug on both the, the 190 and the 200. I, I did some research, and it depends on the application uh, will change the spark plug. So actually, um, and I'll have the information on screen or down in the description or both, but this uses a different spark plug than this because this is used as a pressure washer. You're gonna need a 21 millimeter socket and we'll pull both these out and see if they are in good shape. This spark plug is definitely in good shape and does not need to be replaced. There's a little bit of, you know, a little bit of carbon on there, but not very much and it's not oily so we know we are doing just fine. Before we put the spark plug back, I'm gonna check the gap, uh, which is supposed to be uh, 0 0.030 of an inch. We're there, we're there, perfect. And I'm gonna apply a little bit of anti-seize to these threads, just a tiny bit, to make sure we never have these uh, get stuck. Thread this in by hand, and since we don't have a new crush washer on that, it's just a tiny bit of a turn, just like, just like that, that's all you need. And that is done. Okay, let's turn our attention to the big guy. So again, you might think that, oh man, I don't know how to work on a riding mower. That's different than a, than a push mower. Well, it's actually really not that different at all. So this is a Craftsman YT 3000, which is probably from the, you know, the early uh, 20 teens, like 2012, 2013 or so. Um, we have a uh, Briggs & Stratton 21 horsepower, 540 cc engine. Uh, so this is gonna be a little bit different of an oil change, a little bit different of an air filter. Things are just in different places. And unlike all of the other engines that we're working on today, this one actually does have an, uh, an oil filter. Anyway, let's start with uh, draining the oil. This particular engine has a rubber hose attached to the drain port, making it very easy to drain the old oil. I'm a little embarrassed about that oil, to be honest with you. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I should definitely change this. I, I was doing it once a year. I need to do it twice a year. By the way, very similar engines to this one are used in lawn tractors from Craftsman, Husqvarna, John Deere, and Cub Cadet. Once all the oil is drained, remove the old oil filter. Here is our new oil filter, and that's the part number. So I'm gonna apply a little bit of oil that's oozing out of this <laughs> uh, to our rubber gasket here on our filter, and then we just thread it on. You don't actually want to use any tools to tighten this on. You just want to do it by hand. So I'm gonna call that good right there. The oil capacity for this engine is 48 fluid ounces. Pour most of that in till you read some oil on the dipstick, then run the engine briefly to cycle oil into the filter. Then top off till the dipstick reads full. Oil change done. The air and fuel filters are really easy to check or replace on this engine. The air filter is located under this cover held on by two thumb screws and was very clean. The fuel filter is an inline universal filter that you can find at any auto parts or hardware store. Let's check the spark plug. It's located on the front of the engine behind the exhaust. Remove with a 16 millimeter deep socket and be careful to not burn your fingers on the exhaust if it's hot. The spark plug was in good shape, but a little oily, which could mean future engine issues are on the way. I adjusted the gap to 0 0.030 of an inch, applied some anti-seize and reinstalled. Lastly, I checked the belts, blades, and tires. All were good minus the front tires, which are starting to crack. Filled them up with air and ordered some replacement tires. Now's a great time to grease the front steering and you're done. 
The lawn tractor is showing its age, but she's good for now. Nice, jumping from the big guy back to the little guy. So this is a Honda GX25 on this little Mantis tiller. This exact engine is also used on kind of like uh, more heavy duty uh, string trimmers, a bunch of different applications. Um, an awesome little engine. And oh my gosh, I haven't uh, peeled off this, the shrink wrap on the logo. So I think we should do that on camera. Ooh. <laughs> okay, cool. So I'm gonna go over all the same steps that we just did on all the other gear on this one as well. This one has a fuel filter. This one has, doesn't have an oil filter. The only one that had that is the, uh, is the riding mower. But here's your uh, dipstick and fill plug. We'll get to that in a second. Your air filter and carburetor is over here. The fuel, the fuel filter is actually inside the gas tank and you have to kind of pull it out. I'll show you that. And then the uh, spark plug is in the back of the engine under this plastic cover that we're gonna have to remove. So let's start with the oil change. Changing oil on these extra small four stroke engines couldn't be easier. To drain the old oil, simply lay the engine down as seen here. Remove the dipstick and pour it out into a tray. The oil capacity is 2.7 ounces. Slowly pour the new oil in till it's flush with the fill port. Install the dipstick and you're done. And that is about the easiest oil change in the history of mankind. <laughs> Let's check our filters. The fuel filter is actually inside the gas tank and can be easily checked or replaced by pulling it out. The air filter is an oiled foam element behind this cover. Before opening the cover, close the manual choke to protect the inside of the carburetor. This filter was pretty dirty and needed a cleaning bad. To do that, use carburetor cleaner and a rag to clean the inside of the filter housing and cover. If your foam element is damaged, it needs to be replaced but if it's just dirty, it's easy to make it good as new. First, remove any debris, then clean it with soap and water. Squeeze it to remove any water. Now it will need to be oiled again. Here's how to do that. Get yourself a Ziploc bag or any sandwich bag of your choice. Put your filter in it, some clean Havilland awesomeness <laughs> motor oil, and pour that in there just like that. And then we take that in there and we just close the bag and then we squeeze. We get that filter nice and oily. We take our air filter element out and it is now too oily. So I'm gonna have my pan underneath me here and I'm just going to squeeze the excess oil out. Squeezy, squeeze, squeeze. Good as new. Time to check the spark plug. On this engine, it's hiding underneath this plastic cover held on by one screw. This spark plug needs a 16 millimeter deep socket to remove. And our plug was as good as new. Check the gap, which in this case should be 0 0.025 inches. Apply anti-seize, install the plug, and install the cover. Our tiller is ready to go back into service. I've got one last important tip for all these engines. You want to have very high quality gasoline and you're gonna to wanna to use gasoline treatment and stabilizer. What I have here for you all, and they are a channel sponsor, is Tecron Power Sports uh, and Small Engine Fuel System Treatment. Uh, just one ounce of this will treat four gallons. It will stabilize it up to two years and it'll help keep your fuel system, your carburetor from getting clogged up or varnished, that sort of thing. So this is highly recommended. I love this stuff. For the gasoline that you want to use, if you can get ethanol free, that's awesome. If you can't, then definitely use premium. Um, that's what I use in this jug and I always pre-mix everything. That way I don't have any uh, carburetor troubles. And frankly, I rarely ever have carburetor troubles because I follow this exact uh, procedure. And that's it. Well, that about wraps it up. Thank you all very much for watching. If you have any helpful tips of your own or questions for me, please leave them in the comments below. Again, hitting that like button and subscribing, turning on notifications and sharing this with your friends is a big help to my little channel, so I greatly appreciate it. And hey, I have a bonus question for you. I used to do a lot of lawn care videos. I still do lawn care, but I haven't done videos about it lately because people don't seem as interested in them as they used to be. So if I get 25, please do a lawn care update video for us, Jason, comments within a week of publishing this, I will do one. It's up to you. All right, see you guys next time. I gotta put all these away.